Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Hello, we have the awesome Dr. Renetta Weaver here with us today. She is also known as the Unstuck Queen. Oh my goodness, do I ever need an Unstuck Queen? I can't even tell you how stuck I get and how stuck I know people, um, everybody I know gets it sometime. Um, so we're going to have a great conversation with her today. She is a clinical social worker, a neuroscience coach. Oh my goodness, I can barely even say the word neuroscience, much less be a coach about it. And she is a certified employee assistance professional in the state of Maryland and DC. She is also a two-time best-selling co-author and her chapters, What's Eating You and Healing My Hungry Heart, both highlight her personal journey of overcoming physical and emotional weight. And oh my goodness, I don't know which is worse, the physical weight or the emotional weight. And I'm sure they both go together. I can't wait to talk with you about it. <laughs> the area of weight loss specifically for the bariatric community continues to be the focus of her clinical practice. She is the founder of Total Transitions Ministry and the Bariatric Queen Project. I got to tell you, I'm all about being the queen. Normally I'm wearing a tiara, but it's the holiday season. So I have my um, reindeer antlers on today, <laughs> but normally I have my crown or my tiara on. And Dr. Renetta's goal is to help you release the physical and emotional weight that is standing between where you are and where you want to be. Even if you have trialed and failed, be tried, not trialed, tried and failed before. Oh, Dr. Renetta, thank you so much for being here today. I am so excited. Thank you for having me on your show, Kathy. I'm so excited to be here. And thank you everyone for being here as well. So when we uh, got on this podcast today, you said, um, can you hear me and see me okay? Because I thought I'd be home and I'm not. So can you tell everybody what's going on and where you are? Yes. So, hey, everyone. So um, as Kathy said, I thought I would be home today um, working from home because we telework every two weeks um, on my job. We telework every other week. But I am actually here at my office um, packing up and out processing because tomorrow is my last day of work. Woohoo! Oh. Let me clarify whoop, whoop, that. Whoop, whoop. My last day of employment <gasps> after over a decade of working in the same job. <laughs> a decade of employment is ending tomorrow. Time to yeah. celebrate. <laughs> so tell us what, what you have been doing for the last decade in this job and what made you decide to leap, to dare to leap out of that job. Yes, thank you for asking. So I have been in clinical social work for over 20 years, but for the last decade, I have been um, blessed to work um, with the military um, in the government as the clinical director for an outpatient addictions program. So I have been doing addictions work um, for the past 10 years. Wow, that is so such an important position, but it also has to be incredibly emotionally draining for you. You know, it, it really was emotionally draining because I came with my own addictions background from my family. Um, never thought I would work in addictions. And I understand when people say I didn't choose it, the work chose me. I really feel like this work chose me and I feel honored to have done it for the past 10 years. But um, it does come with a lot of emotions. So I had to be emotionally healthy and I started doing my work so that I could be more effective in my work. That is so true, Kathy. So true. Yeah. So what are you going to be doing uh, now that you're going to have um, your days free? 
Yeah, well, you know, I don't know how free they will be. Um, I am really on a quest, like you said in your introduction, I am on a quest to help um, bariatric patients. That's a very personal reason for me. Um, so I just want to back up a little bit and say in 2016, um, Ju June 16, 2016, I had the bariatric sleeve surgery. And I started at 250 pounds and I was able to um, reach my lowest weight of about 179 until COVID happened. Wow. <laughs> and COVID hit me like it hit everyone else. And I did regain some of my weight. I gained about 10 pounds back. And some people would say 10 pounds, that's nothing. But for people that's, who have that, tried. That's, that's exactly what I just, that's exactly what I just thought. I just went 10 pounds, that's nothing. <laughs> I hear it all the time. But for people who have had weight loss surgery, to, to have tried and failed at weight loss in the past and almost give up hope on being able to successfully lose weight and keep it off. Like we can, we can lose it, but can't keep it off. That was, that was a big deal for me to see those numbers trending upward on the scale. And so, um, you know, when I leave this job and, and the reason I am I decided to leave and we can talk about how that all came about. But the reason I decided to leave is to really dedicate my work to bariatric, um, to the bariatric community and really educate that community and support that community um, when it comes to mental health. Because when we lay on that table to have the surgery, it is a great thing. It's a great thing to have a tool to help us lose the physical weight. But if we don't address like all of the things that led us to using food as a coping mechanism, then the weight will come back on, right? So I, you know, being in mental health, being a clinician, working in addictions for over a decade, I started putting the pieces together that it doesn't even matter what the addiction is. It could be alcohol or it could be food or, or anything else, right, that we engage in to numb out and escape. So I want to take the principles that I taught in addictions that I taught my clients to use when it comes to overcoming alcohol. And I want to apply that to overcoming our relationship with food. We still have to eat. But yeah, that's I want to bad thing, right? You you can totally cut out alcohol, but you can't totally cut out food. <laughs> yeah, we can't totally cut out food, but it's about developing a different relationship with food and a different mindset around eating because the relationship that comes as a result of addiction is an unhealthy, is an unhealthy one, right? So a lot of times where what we're feeding is not true hunger, it's feeding the hunger of our emotions. You know, I always yeah. teach an acronym, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Before you pick up that drink, before Halt. you pick up that fork, before you engage in your addiction, ask yourself, am I truly hungry or am I angry, lonely, or tired? Usually mm. we'll find that we're one of those other things and not truly hungry. Yeah. yeah, I love that acronym HALT. Um, yes. I, one of the things that I actually do for myself um, is when I have a negative thought about myself, like, oh, I'm so fat uh, <laughs> or I'm so old or, you know, whatever comes up, I literally do stop. I think I'm going to change that to HALT and then go <laughs> hungry, angry, lonely, tired. What's wrong with me? Absolutely. I love that. Absolutely, Kathy. Yeah. Absolutely. A lot of times we don't even realize that there is something wrong with us now. And, and I want to say, like, there's nothing wrong with us. We are the essence of beauty, whatever size, shape, color, whatever we are, right? But when I say what's wrong, when, when we talk about what's wrong with us, something's bothering us. 
right? Right. That's the difference. There's nothing inherently wrong with us, but sometimes Mm -hmm. we think there's something wrong with us, but really there's something bothering us. And we Mm. don't realize that. I like that. that. It's not wrong with us. It's bothering us. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Yes. Yes. So we can learn to separate, you know, from that negative self-talk and really attached to what's really bothering us, what's eating us, right? Which is why I wrote, what's eating you? And killing my hungry heart. It's like, what do I need that's missing right now that I'm trying Mm -hmm. to feed, right? What, Mm -hmm. What is the need that I'm trying to feed? A lot of times we don't recognize that because we haven't stopped, like you said, or given pause or halt right? Like we were just talking about, we didn't take time out to really say what's going on with me, right? We just feel the feelings and in response, we start eating them away. Yeah. Yeah. um, Yeah. I I will tell you that I have caught myself many, many times eat halfway through a bag of potato chips. And I'm not talking about a single serving bag of potato chips <laughs> well it's a single serving for me but it's not supposed to be a single serving halfway through that and I finally like I feel like I come to and go what am I doing why am I doing this and then I think about it I'm like oh I'm worried about our son or you know I'm worried about COVID or whatever it is you know what I'm glad you said that because one thing uh, one thing I learned from studying neuroscience is, you know, when we're in that survival mode, when something's wrong or something's bothering us, we go into what we call fight or flight. And when we're in flight or fight, that means our body is, our brain is sending a signal to our body that we need to prepare ourselves for survival. When we're in that survival state, we're not thinking rationally, right? We're thinking reactively. It's like, how can I get away from this fast so that it won't eat me up, right? So that it won't destroy me. So in that moment, when we're eating a bag of potato chips and then we come to our senses later on and say, what did I just do? It's because we were in that survival mode, that fight or flight that won't allow us to think clearly, right? It's all about survival at that point. And for for some of us, survival means salt, sugar, and fat, right? That's what we go to for survival, not only because it tastes good, but because our body is trying to prepare to run, right? And it needs Mm -hmm. that fuel to run. And what fuels the body Mm -hmm. faster than salt, sugar, and fat? All of that (laughs) is fuel to the body. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. from a prehistoric Mm -hmm. standpoint, just from an evolutionary standpoint, that's Mm -hmm. what we do, salt, sugar, and fat, right? We're not over- Mm -hmm gorging on vegetables or fruit, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Now when we're in survival state and and unfortunately that's a place that a lot of us live in cost like 24 seven is that survival state living on the edge, just being irritable or something's wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, I love that. I love that. So you talked just a little bit about overcoming your physical weight that you had the bariatric sleeve Um, and congratulations on all your success with that. If you're not watching this on YouTube and you want to check out Dr. Renata, I'm telling you, she's hot. (laughs) You are one beautiful woman. I can't imagine you. you ever being overweight. You just look amazing. Thank you so much. You know, I wish that I had that side by side picture to show you. And, you know, people always say, oh, you were beautiful before you were beautiful with the weight. And, you know, so um, I think what it was is I didn't have that inner beauty that I, you know, I had I felt really ugly inside because a lot of trauma had happened in my past. And the weight Mm. was there to me, the weight came upon right after the trauma happened, right? Right after the trauma occurred. So I always associated my weight gain with the trauma. So I didn't feel beautiful, you know, I didn't feel beautiful. And, and I don't look at other people who may not be a size, whatever, 
who may be a size right. whatever and say, oh, they, they're fat. They need to lose weight. I never, mm -hmm. I never do me that. Neither. I, I no, never, me neither. So, so you get it. I never look at yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, it was how I was looking at myself on the inside. And I, I mm -hmm. knew all of that stuff was there. And the weight mm -hmm. hid a lot of that stuff. But I wasn't happy mm -hmm. with the weight either. I mm -hmm. just wasn't happy. Yeah. So did you know a, a lot about bariatric um, services? Uh, no, procedures is that the right word <laughs> did you know a lot about bariatric procedures before you had yours done or did you dive into that when you were thinking about it for yourself so before 2016 well before 2015 when I first heard about bariatric um, medicine and all of that I had no clue so I was just like a lot of people um, who had the desire to change the shape of their body to lose weight. I tried everything, every program known to man. If you name it, I've tried it. Me too. Me, Pills, I'm, count me on. Pills, and lotions, <laughs> right? I've tried it. And yes. I, re I really got to a point where I was um, feeling hopeless. My, I, I was in pain when I was trying to walk. Um, I, I started oh gosh, having yeah. a little bit of health challenges like high blood pressure. I was called pre-diabetic mm -hmm. and my coworker said, you either are or aren't. She said that they're calling you pre-diabetic, you know, so I didn't know about it. But what happened is that same coworker told me about bariatric surgery and gave me the name of her surgeon. And oh. at that same time, another coworker had just gone in and had her surgery done. And so that's how mm -hmm. I found out by two coworkers who said, yes, this is what you might want to look into. So I did, I mm -hmm. leap for joy. A lot of people um, get scared when they hear about bariatric surgery because it's a surgery and because right. they've known people who have had the surgery and regain their weight back. Right. And yes. so it scares a lot of people. But for me, it was hope. When I heard about the surgery, it was like, oh my gosh, I was so excited. It gave me all my hope back. So I was for it. I was like, how can I yeah. sign up for this? And I was mad, Kathy. I was mad when they said, oh no, there's a process to this and you have to wait. <laughs> you have to go to all these classes and see all these doctors and do all these things before you can actually get approved to have the surgery. So I was like, what? <laughs> I just want it tomorrow. Why do I have to do all this? I'm ready now. I wanted, I wanted the answer to releasing the weight and keeping it yeah. off. I wanted it right. right then and there. And I had to go through a process to get there. Well, I've heard that one of the benefits of having uh, the surgery is that even before you actually lose the weight, you immediately are no longer a diabetic. Is that true? That is true. When I started losing the weight, I came off of all, um, well, I was just taking um, medication for my high blood pressure. I had not started taking medicine for the diabetes, even though my doctor threatened me with, you know, you're going to have to start <laughs> taking medicine. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, right. in that time frame, I wasn't, um, I didn't have to go on the medication. And then when I started losing the weight and they took my labs, you know, my, the, the blood labs, and could see my numbers, I didn't need to be on medication anymore. It was amazing. Oh, that is. It, it, it was, it's your body that just goes, hey, you just gave us what we what we needed. Thank you. It was like a reset button on life, not just losing the mm. physical weight, but a reset button on my health and on my emotional health, my self-confidence. Um just me showing up in my life, me being able to write those books and do some things related to my business. Um, it, it was like a new beginning all the way around. But I have to be honest. Well, then you. how? Yeah, go ahead. Can, can I? <laughs> I love so, honesty. Fill us in. Give us the give us the dirty details. <laughs> even though, although I was very excited um, I did not tell you that um, most of my family was not, including my husband. 
Most of my family oh. did not want me to have this surgery. Oh, they were against it. it I mean, I heard- Was it because everything. they were scared just because it was surgery? They were scared um, and did not understand why I couldn't just lose the weight the normal way. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I did is I took them all out. For, well, they took me out for dinner on my birthday. And I said, I have an announcement to make. And no, I'm not pregnant. Because that was the first thing everybody <laughs> thought. <laughs> I said, I am having bariatric surgery. And it was like, you know, those uh, movies where you hear the music stop. You just hear the, the record playing and the music just stops. It was like the uh -huh. music stopped. Everybody got quiet. And then everybody started talking like, are you crazy? What's wrong with you? Why are you sure? You know, so I just looked at everyone around the table and I said, I'm not asking for permission. I wrote my own permission slip. I'm just simply Woo! telling you that I am having this surgery and you can be there for me or not, but this is my body. I'm the only one who has to live in this body. I know how I feel. And that is why I made this decision. So... That is so powerful. You can write your own permission slip for stuff. I love that idea. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, I love the way you told them that too. That's fabulous. Yes. So did your husband come around? He did. And I'll tell you why, because um, part of the process of getting approved for the surgery was going to an information seminar and going to support group. So he came with me to the information seminar and he looked around the room and saw all the other people there. But I really think it was the support group that helped him to say, okay, I get it now. Because other people had their spouses there. Um, and, they, and, and people like me were just talking about what it would mean to them to release the weight and how it's been a barrier in their life. And then, you know, for the spouses, it was teaching how to support people like me. Um, who really oh, want to make this decision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So then can you talk a little bit about how you overcame the emotional weight? Yes, ma'am. Um, so, you know, part of the process of getting bariatric surgery, part of the approval process was going through a psych evaluation and it was done by a clinical psychologist. Now I told you I'm a social worker. I've been one for 20 years. I interview people all the time. Well, this time I was sitting on the other side of the table being the, the one who was being interviewed. And, and I had to, at that moment, talk about some very difficult, challenging things. And I was nervous. Um, for the first time, I think I had a real appreciation about people who show up and talk to me and tell me all of their things is, I was very nervous. Um, but I, we got through it and my psychologist said, I think you're a very good candidate for the surgery. But he said, my only caution is, is you're gonna have to find something else to do with your hands. You can't eat your emotions away. Um, and, and he was right, right? So. Um, I kind of ignored his advice at first because when you first have the surgery, the weight just comes off. It falls off. Oh, Whether that had to be so exciting. It's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then what will happen is the weight loss stops and you will hit a stall. And so I hit that stall where the scale wasn't going down. But I was, I was okay with that because I was looking good. I was feeling good. My clothes were, you know, people were giving me clothes. I didn't even have to go shopping. They were just like, I'm so proud wow. of you. And they were giving me all this, this new wardrobe. But then uh, what happened is life happened. Um, I had, you know, some things started happening um, in my family and my personal life and you know, I could no longer turn the food for comfort because when you have the surgery, it's a real thing that it reduces your appetite and the size of your stomach. So even when you want to feed all those emotions, you cannot because you will absolutely get sick. 
<laughs> um, and, and I mean, physically sick. It's very uncomfortable to overeat with the surgery. So I did. I, yeah, I heard from, that. I know several people that have had that and they said they will literally throw up if they eat too much. And, and that happened to me. Um, I, I put my hand up because I always say, I think it happened about five times until I learned, until the signal got to my brain, like, you cannot do this. You cannot do this because I did, I tried. And so um, it doesn't work. You will get sick. And the thing about it is not only will you throw up, but you'll be sick before you throw up. You, you'll just want to throw up so you can stop feeling sick and it won't come until it's ready. So the misery of all of that is just not worth it. Um, so, so I learned um, that I had to, you know, get some support for myself around these emotions, around what I was dealing with, what was eating at me, what was eating me that I could not no longer turn to my relationship, my former relationship with food. It, it was just broken. I couldn't do that anymore. So I had to find a new way. Yeah. And you found a new way. Did you get your hands busy? What'd you get your hands busy <laughs> doing? <laughs> oh, I tried, I tried to sew. I tried to crochet. Neither, I haven't been able to do either one. So no, um, what I did was I ended up going to my own therapist and I ended up going actually to a life coach um, who really helped me to look inside and start asking myself these hard questions that I would have been ignoring. And um, what I discovered through that process is a lot of negative uh, self-talk that I was giving myself. So I learned how to turn those messages around and start affirming myself. And I also learned that there were desires in my heart that I was putting um, to the side because of judgment from myself and from other people saying, you know, you're not good enough, you're not worthy, you can't do this. And all, the, all those messages were in me from years ago, right? So I had to do a lot of work in changing my inner dialogue and so that I could get really free. And when I started losing um, that weight, um, that emotional weight, then I started releasing the physical weight again. I noticed that they're both, that's how I noticed that they were both linked together. Like I was holding on to this body weight as armor because I yeah. wasn't looking inside and really getting in, in touch with the tough things that were going on inside of me. Yeah, wow, that's powerful. So um, after you went through all that, is that when you were like, I want to help other people do this too? After I went through that, Kathy, I have to tell you, I discovered a new life and I knew it was real. I knew that if this could be real for me, it could be real for other people. And what I, was, what I discovered, I saw other people um, either gaining their weight back or just being stuck in their emotions. And because I had done some work on myself and because I work in this field and I tell other people to do the work and then I started doing the same thing that I was encouraging other people to do when I started living my words and could really see how effective uh, the change was because I did it. Um, that's when I started saying, I have to share this with the bariatric community. I think this is why a lot of people are stuck. And um, I got the nickname, the Unstuck Queen, because I um, was going to start a podcast about getting people free from their emotional and physical weight. And somebody say, oh, you're the Unstuck Queen. And that name just just stuck with me. Um, so I never started the podcast, but what I decided to do was develop a program for bariatric patients and their providers, because I feel like even the providers in the community don't know enough about what it is to have the relationship that we might have with food and how that creates a barrier to our weight loss. And sometimes we're ashamed by the very providers that are that are helping us because they just don't understand. 
right? It's like, mm-hmm. oh, you mm-hmm. regain the weight. Why can't you keep it off? Well, there's a lot of a lot of things going on mental health wise that they may not understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's important. Yeah. So, and I know you have another program, um, another uh, project coming up um called the bariatric monologue can you talk a little bit about that and what that's going to be all about yes so um of course y'all you already uh, um shared that i have been in two anthologies um and so what i decided to do and both anthologies are really about my bariatric journey to weight loss well now I am launching a new anthology that I'm going to be leading, and it's called The Bariatric Monologues. And I am actually looking for people who have had bariatric surgery and have gone through their own journey to share their stories of what it's like. Because one thing, I belong to a lot of bariatric weight loss groups, and so new people are always trying to get information from people who have been through it to find out what they have to look forward to and what are some of the um, positives and negatives of the surgery. So I just wanna put together a compilation of, you know, different people to share their unique journeys so that we can share with the world. Yeah, I I can imagine that that is gonna be a really popular book because I know for myself, I have at times looked into it I think a lot of people really want to know more about it. And I don't think there's a better way to learn more about it than hearing from people who've actually gone through it and their challenges and how they've overcome them. I am super excited about this project. Um, The Bariatric Queen Project is my new trademark company. I'm very excited about that. I just heard from the attorney that it's all it's a go. So that's my new trade. Congratulations. Yes. yes. Thank you so much. And, and I really want to dedicate my life. Like I said, my work, my passion to the bariatric community, whether you have the surgery or not, is not a big deal. Um, I will tell you, you have to do the same work. It's not the easy way out. You have to do the same work. And as you did before, it's just something to get you started. It's a tool to get you started mm-hmm. on losing the weight, but you still mm-hmm. have to deal with those inner demons, the things that may have oh, led yeah. you to gaining the weight in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tell us what the Bariatric Queen Project, How is? what are you going to do in that to help other people and what kind of people would be a good fit for that? Mm -hmm. So in addition to writing the anthology um, that that we're in the process of doing, I'm going to be creating a course for professionals who work with the bariatric community just to teach them about the different types of surgery, the vocabulary around the surgery. You know how we were just laughing a few minutes ago, like, what do you call the this? procedure whatever. yeah so right just teaching people to get uh, to get familiar with the language like there's something called the loser's bench and that sounds really negative to most of the world but it people, does people in the in the bariatric community we know the loser's uh-huh. bench is for all of the people who have made it to the bench and are losing the weight right so, oh, that, so that's, that's like the biggest loser show that was really yes. a positive not a negative yeah so it's the yes. loser's bench oh wow yes. okay get yes. ready to become a loser <laughs> Teaching them the vocabulary, teaching them the types of surgery, teaching them, you know, some of the um, barriers to weight loss and just teaching them some of the pros and cons and how to deal with that. Um, I think that will be really helpful for professionals, but also um, there will be a separate program for the people who actually go through the surgery and have the surgery, how to deal with the new you, the new normal around eating. Because when I first had the surgery and I went out to dinner with my family, I have to tell you, I came home and I cried because mm-hmm. I could not eat. I could right. not eat with them. I, I mean, I could not eat. I took one bite of food and I was full. And I just sat there and just like you and I are talking, I sat there and instead of looking at the people I was supposed to be eating with, I was looking at their food like, you know, looking around at their place. 
<laughs> desiring to eat. And I was like, I can't yeah. eat. And I cried. And my mother said, she looked at me and said, you're the one who wanted to have the surgery. So yes, I did want to mm -hmm. have the surgery. And would I do it again? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. But there's a breakup process that we go through when we're breaking up with our substance of choice. And for me, that was food. Mourning, yeah. you have to go through mourning. Yes, it's, it's a very social thing. You know, we we celebrate mm -hmm. with food. We do a lot of things with food. Oh, yeah. So yeah, oh, it's a yeah. whole new thing. So I think, you know, the Bariatric Queen Project is just gonna offer a lot of education, training, consulting for providers and for patients, you know, people who actually go through the training. Yeah. That sounds wonderful. Well, yeah. I'm super excited that you're doing that uh, because it is very needed. I mean, I know a lot of people who either have done it, want to do it, need to do it, or want to, you know, need the yeah. um, physical and emotional weight to be lifted, in, even if they don't get it done. So, yeah, um, I, I think you're going to be incredibly successful with this. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you for letting me share um, about it today with you and with your audience. Um, I, yeah. I too, because I've been on that side of carrying the weight and know what that feels like and then losing the weight and also knowing what it feels like to still feel heavy, the heaviness of emotions, right? So mm -hmm. it, it's not all about the outside. And of course, I'm mm -hmm. feeling myself. Yeah, I lost the weight, of course. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, there's, there's that inner part that you just want to be at peace with now. I have oh, to tell yeah. you the evidence of my inner work is that tomorrow's my last day of work. I never could have done this if I was still carrying that weight. I never could have done a lot of things, um, writing the book, opening the private practice, just being seen, you know, on your show or in the community at all. I just, you know, I didn't have a voice. I didn't, I didn't oh, have wow. a, the confidence. I didn't have a lot of mm -hmm. things that I feel like, okay, I have them now. And it's not like, oh, mm -hmm. look at me. It's like, oh, I, this is what I've been <laughs> waiting for, right? This is yeah. what I've been waiting for because I really do feel like there are people who are assigned to me that I'm supposed to show up for. And now I feel like mm -hmm. I can finally show up. Mm -hmm. So it's so interesting because, I mean, almost immediately I felt your energy and your beauty and uh, right away said, oh my gosh, I love your energy. We're going to have fun having this conversation. I cannot imagine that before you got your bariatric surgery that you were hiding, not letting people see you, not using your voice. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was hidden in plain view. I was hidden mm -hmm. in plain view. I was very, I was carrying a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, a lot of self-hate, a lot of any oh negative gosh. adjective that you could think of. Wow. I was, but I always hid it behind a smile. I mean, my mask, I mm -hmm. know we're masking um, a lot. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about masking, but you know, I really have been wearing a mask for a long, long time. And that was, I would smile, right? I would smile, mm -hmm. but on the inside when I was by myself I did not feel that whatever you saw whatever you thought you saw I did not feel mm -hmm. it now I feel like my inside is is really matching the outside so when I smile wow. I feel like it's genuine I feel like it's coming from a happy place so it's got to be a lot easier for you that has to save a lot of energy trying not to force that outside oh, yes. that doesn't match the inside i think i was um tired physically and emotionally just tired tired of pretending that's when i yeah. said i was in that hopeless place i really was mm -hmm. i was just tired and i like i said i had tried everything every pill potion and lotion known to man to lose <laughs> the weight and i was successful but with losing the weight i just couldn't keep it off so, right. and I will regain double the weight that I had lost. And, you know, mm -hmm. most of the people who have had the surgery can relate to that journey of losing the weight, not keeping it off, gaining back double, feeling ashamed, feeling hopeless. So the surgery really is a tool of hope for us. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so exciting. 
Yeah. And I just feel like you're, you're changing the world. You're going <laughs> to, you know, you were doing it in the job you had, and now you're going to do it in your own business. I want to, that, that is my goal. Um, just, you know, changing the world, changing the world of people who are assigned to me. I, you know, I, every, I'm not for everyone. I, I get it, but I can't people- imagine you're not for everyone. <laughs> I really can't. (laughs) I can't imagine anyone not just immediately going, I want to hang out with you more. How can I do that? I love it. And I'm going to tell y'all how to do that too. Um, But cool. Tell us. (laughs) Yeah. So listen, y'all definitely, I do want to tell y'all how y'all can connect with me. Um, I have a website. It's renettaweaver.com. And you can connect with me on all social media under Dr. Renetta. R-E-N-E-T-T-A, one word, Dr. Renetta, right? If you go on social media, if I'm there, you'll find me under Dr. Renetta. And my website again is renettaweaver.com. And is doctor spelled out in Dr. Renetta? It's D-R-R-E-N-E-T-T-A. Yeah. Sorry, my phone's ringing. Thanks for telling me that because I'm thinking is it spelled out on the way or no so not spelled out just dr yes one word d-r-r-e-n-e-t-t-a and um for those of you on clubhouse I have just joined so you make sure that you follow me there as well (laughs) I don't even know what that is what is that so it's an app but it's for iphone users are you an iphone user I am an iphone user I'm going to send you an invitation. Thank it's, you. It's an audio app. And so, you know, YouTube is more videos and some audio, mm-hmm. but um, Clubhouse is a straight mm-hmm. audio app with all types of topics on there. And cool. so, you know, I'm going to, and so they have different, you can create a space where you can talk just like we're talking now. And you can actually get a room and just talk through things or eventually you can get a clubhouse and regularly come on and have a show. So yes, Ooh, I'm going to send you an invite. You're going to have a show? You're going to have a show. I am. I am. Woo! You know I'm going to have a show about this bariatric community, you know, for the bariatric community. I think I'm going to yeah. call it the Bariatric Queen Project. And it's just going to be a show all about bariatric surgery, the things that we need to know or the things that we go through. That's going to be awesome. You're going to, yeah. you are just going to help so many people and entertain them. You're so entertaining too. And I would get on there just to uh, get inspired and uplifted by you. Yes, that, you know, I, that is my main thing. Just be inspired and uplifted. I've been doing this work. I've been wanting to inspire and uplift people um, even before I became a social worker, they just told me I had to go to school and get a license to do what I do. But I, I ordinarily would be doing this anyway. I just love people. Um, I love connecting with people. I love healing, hurting people. Um, or or not, not that I'm a healer, but telling them, you know, guiding them to go inside and heal themselves. I love being on yeah. that journey with people. I love yeah. it. So when you... First of all, how did you decide to quit your job that you currently have? And were you nervous about it? Were you scared? And how did you overcome that? Okay. Yes. To answer your question. Yes, I was nervous when I hit that send button. I think my hand was doing like this. And I just said, (laughs) I just did it real quick and it was done. What am I doing? What is this crazy? (laughs) Yes, I did have that. I mean, one part of me was like, do it, do it, do it. And the other part of me was like, no. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, um, uh, of course, I had the same resistance that I had when I was um, going to have the surgery. My husband did not want me to leave my job. And my Mm. family was totally against it, too. Um, I think, you know, in our generation um, or, you know, there's not a lot of entrepreneurs that we know. And so in our generation, it was like, you go to school, you get a good job and you retire and you stay safe. That's right. That's exactly uh, how I was raised. Yes. Yes. And so 
you know, I do, I'm blessed with a pretty good job with good benefits and security and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. And to talk mm -hmm. about leaving my job, I have been talking about this for a while, but to do it in the midst of a lot of crazy stuff that's going on in the world, a lot of instability. Yeah, you're, like, you're not only doing it, number one, you know, it's scary. Most people don't quit their job, their good jobs, but you're doing it during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. So what led me to do it is um, I had been talking about it for a number of years, but I was on the fence because I had been at this job for over a decade. And I was like, well, if I could just hang in there for uh, a little more, like a decade more, then, you know, mm -hmm. I will be close to early retirement. Yep. And I just could not see myself doing this for another 10 years, 10 plus years, right? right? Because I, right. I wouldn't even be at retirement in 10 more years. Yeah. So, right. you know, I kept saying, in, in, in the meantime, I had started my private practice. It's been very successful. So I knew that I could do well. And not only did I know I could do well, I had the evidence because I had been turning away business on the private side because I didn't have enough oh, wow. time in my schedule. Yeah to handle the amount of people right. who wanted my support. I had to turn them away. So it yeah. came to a point where I was like, I have to make a decision here. And mm -hmm. so I was still very scared. I was scared of letting go of the benefits and the security. So mm -hmm. I kept asking, you know, my husband, please, you know, check into your benefits. Let me know. I'll mm -hmm. even pay for them if I have to. Like, mm -hmm. just, just check into your job, right? And he wouldn't do it right. because he didn't want me to leave. So <laughs> <laughs> he, he kept saying, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I, I, I just decided one day, like, you're not going to do it. Forget it. I'm still going to do what I have to do. And when he knew mm -hmm. I was serious, he was like, oh, I checked into my benefits where, okay, but that's a real thing. And that is what mm -hmm. keeps people from making a decision about jumping. So I mm -hmm. get that. But what right. happened at the same time this year is um, I told you I had been here for over a decade and I had won numerous awards, um, been honored for my work and all of that stuff. Well, this year I got written up for insubordination. And that's a true story. What? I, I got I can't up. even imagine you being insubordinate about anything. I couldn't either. But apparently I I did something that didn't sit right with the powers to be and I got written up and I said I have wrote a little note to myself and I said when your comfort zone becomes uncomfortable that's life trying to tell you it's time. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, you know, that really did me a favor. At first, uh -huh. I was mad, but it really did a favor for me because it was like, it's time to go. Right. There have been right. some other things that have happened that started making me feel uncomfortable. But that was really mm -hmm. the catalyst to say, you're not yeah. going to make it. This so place what happened, doesn't appreciate this place yeah. doesn't appreciate me. I'm out of here. What happened, Kathy, is after I got written up, I was kind of distraught. And I went to my doctor and I said, you got to do something for me. I started telling her about my job and I cried the whole appointment. I cried so much. Mm -hmm. I think I scared her. And she was like, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? I'll give you whatever you want. Just stop crying. <laughs> so she she placed me on antidepressants, which is nothing wrong with antidepressants, but I had never taken them in my life. And I found myself taking antidepressants just so I could get up and go to work in the morning. Oh, yeah. You don't want to be doing that for another that, 10 years plus. That did not sit right with me. And I start that is the point that I started regaining my weight. Oh, and yeah. I said... I looked at myself one day, I stopped taking the medicine and I said, you're regaining your weight because you're, you're forcing yourself to be in a situation that no longer serves mm -hmm. you and you're not mm -hmm. serving them. And mm -hmm. so, um, that, that happened in the spring 
of 2020, right when right after the pandemic hit. And oh wow! How many whammies could come at y'all at once? <laughs> a lot, right? <laughs> that was a rough but, time. But we are more than conquerors, and we we That's can survive right. it, right? So I called. That is another, right. I called another clinician, and I said, "Tell me how to go full time. I cannot stay in this where I am. I need to jump out." So um, she told me how she was doing it, and I just took the information from her, um, her processes, and I started acting and taking action and applying that so that I can make this jump. And during our phone call, she was like, okay, the first thing I want you to do is tell me when your last day is going to be. So Ooh, I, gave her, I, <laughs> I gave her a date and she said, Renetta, you almost sound scared. And I said, I am. I can't believe I'm saying this out loud, right? I, uh -huh. can, I want it, but I can't believe I'm actually saying that because I know our yeah. words have a lot of power. And once we speak it, yes, it's going to come to pass. Well, mm -hmm. I already knew I was going to have to jump a lot of barriers, my own mental barriers and the barriers of the people who love me, right? Um, but when the thing is, when I was convinced that this was the right thing to do and convict and I had conviction behind it all the other people in my life and my family my husband they got right behind me and started cheering me uh, on that's fabulous so, so I do want to say that and so what happened is um I still had not put in my resignation and but I knew in my mind I was preparing to do it well what happened is um the person um there was some changes on my job and I was getting more and more work dumped on me. And one day oh. I looked at an email and was like, this is it. This is it. I'm done. So good for I, you. I crafted the letter. And like I said, my finger yep. was on that, but my finger yep. was like this. And I just said, uh -huh. and that <laughs> was it. That is celebration the time. <laughs> so that was 30 days ago. 30 days ago and you I gave cannot... him a 30 day notice. That's, that's fabulous that you gave him a 30 day notice. Yes. Yes. And I cannot tell you that I have been happy, so happy and at peace with my decision ever since. Oh, I think the hardest part of making the decision is deciding to do it. Yes. After that, yes. Everything else just fell in line. Yeah, actually, I have a quote that I use um, often from my coach, Jennifer Kim, and it is uh, the, the pain is not in the action. The pain is in the decision. Yeah. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful and true quote. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she is so right because you're so back and forth, back and forth. Yes. Well, I know that you know that you've made the right decision, but just let me tell you, I have a similar story. Um, my boss told me I laughed and smiled too much. And so I'm never going to get promoted again. <laughs> and I had another 15 years to go before I could retire. I'd already put in almost 20, but I had another 15 before I could retire. And I thought exactly what you did. I thought, okay, only 15 more. And then I thought, that's my life. That is 15 years of my life. Yeah where I yeah. am going to be miserable here. And like you, I started getting sick. I started getting migraines that ended me up in the ER. Yes. Yes. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. And so like you, I went to my husband and I'm like, I, ha I have to do this. I have to. And when I put my resignation in, my boss told me the same one that told me I left and smiled too much. He said, you're making the biggest mistake of your life. You will never make this kind of money again. Did you hear any of that stuff from your colleagues or bosses or anything? I have heard that. I've heard, are you sure? You're sure. Are you sure that you're sure? You're not being humble. You should just tell her. Oh, I, I've heard it all. Yeah. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. But and I oh know. my my mom was just like, you're ruining your life. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, I'm getting a life. I'm getting a life. That's right. Yeah. And you know what I said? Yeah. I can, I said, I'm a social worker. If I need to, I can go back to work. I know how to get mm -hmm. a, another job, mm -hmm. but I right. know what 
my God told me was that there were people waiting on me to show up. And my yes. heart is telling me it's time to show up for me yeah. and those people. Yeah. Well, I made a decision for myself and I'm, I'm not suggesting that you do this because in the, in hindsight, it was probably not the best decision because it was really focused on making money and I should have been focused on helping others, which is what mm -hmm. you're focused on. And I admire mm -hmm. you for that. Now I am focused on helping others. But at first I was like, I'm going to show that boss. I will double my income. I know I can do this. <laughs> and I did. And I have gone on to 10 times my income and I know you will do the same and more. I believe that I, I do believe, you know, even though my agenda is not solely income, I still have to eat right. and still have to live and I still right. deserve a good life. I still deserve. And I believe I can do better on my own than I can mm -hmm. with somebody else's dream. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. absolutely can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You've yeah. been playing. You have been playing smaller um, because of those boundaries. And now you yeah. get to play full out dr renata so excited for you <laughs> that made me excited yes yeah. yes it's yeah. time to take up and space. you're gonna help hundreds and thousands of women you are yes yes i i'm so excited to be somebody's answer somebody's prayer somebody's something that they've been looking for yes yeah yeah so um your total transitions ministry um yes. that word transition is exactly what comes to mind for me with what you're doing now you're not starting over you're just transitioning into the next level of your life yes ma'am you know that everybody asks me do you have a church where that name come from and i believe my work is a ministry right it doesn't have a religious affiliation even though people hear mm -hmm. the word ministry and may tie it to that but no it's uh -huh. like my weight and the in the trauma history that used to cause me misery and now it's my ministry i have turned that around wow. to help other people who have been in the same shoes i, I want to say yeah. i used to be you and now i'm somewhere else i'm where you're trying to get to or beyond where you're trying to get to mm -hmm. Or, you know, mm -hmm. you're trying to get beyond where I am. And I just want to mm -hmm. be someone to support you in that journey. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've gone a little bit over time even. I'm so excited talking to you. So I've got to shut up and stop asking you questions. You know what? I would love one year from now to come back and interview you again and hear what all you have accomplished. Would you be open to that? I would definitely be open to that. And I appreciate that opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So everybody listening to this, I want you to comment. I want you to let us know, do you want to have a year from now anniversary with Dr. Renata and find out all, everything that she's done, all the people that she's helped, how her life has changed. Cause I know for sure you're, I, I know for sure that when you come back here, you're like, yeah, I thought these good things would happen, but look what all has happened. <laughs> Yes. I can't wait to hear that. Yes, I'm excited about coming back a year from now and just showing y'all, sharing with you all, all the wonderful things that are happening. I look forward to it. That sounds fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and just as a reminder, all of the links that Dr. Renetta shared will be in the show notes. So please click on those, check her out, learn more more about the bariatric monologue anthology about her bariatric queen project and reach out to her listen to her on clubhouse and all the other places that we will have in the show notes thank you so much dr renetta for being here with us today thank you kathy and thanks everyone thank you for listening to dare to leap say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com there you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community join us again soon on dare to leap until then mm -hmm.